Scorpios, welcome to the Indoor Studios. Um, David Sky Tarot doing a special reading um, this um, week. If you do want to see your heart spread, if you haven't watched that last week's, it's still up for the end of November, and that would be uh, pertinent. And that's reading the one that's on your mind, the one that's in your heart there. Um, and what I want to do this week is something a little different, is uh, try to look at, I'm going to do a heart spread, but in the number two position, so it'll be in your person, um, it's going to be your own uh, a relationship with love. Try to read what is your relationship with love, Read Kind of looking at this from a little more spiritual, internal point of view. Um, here, I'd like I do on the Soul Family uh, Collective Daily Read, which uh, I'll put a link if you'd like to check it out. I wish you would if you haven't. Just see if you think you might want to be a part of that. Think of Terrence McKenna and find the others, guys. So, um, that's what we're talking about. And always Thursday, this should add to Scorpio and uh, Libra Day here. Um, so, let me see what we get. Let's a little more energy onto these. See what we get. This is uh, you, and we're looking at the first and seventh house. Seventh house being in astrology. Uh, where it is we have what we desire, what we're looking for. So I look at that, it's our anima or animus projection, the perfect male or female idealization we have in our head. Uh, Jung talked about originally in some slight different fashion. I think this is the way we can look at it. Definitely fits the seventh house, fits manifestation. And ultimately, too, this is a lot about manifestation. If you're a manifester, stay a minute, about to start. Okay, Scorpios, this is for you. Moon. Okay, this is very significant. It's going to get complicated. I, I knew it was Scorpio. I brought on myself, baby. No, I was thinking, you know, with the energies. Well, it's 18. We got the new moon. We got the full moon coming t tonight, really. And so here we are. <laughs> you coming in. This is your energy in and around um, manifestation, spirituality. This, uh, your own relationship with love and relationship. This is where you're coming in. The moon is the shadows. It's a lot of feelings. There's something usually that you're not seeing. So, if you're manifesting, and you know, I do count the bottom of the deck, by the way, and you have the four of wands. That's uh, actions, and so to me it becomes the building of a long-term committed relationship or marriage. That's what that represents. So that's overall energy over this reading, you know? It's like the smell of it is in the air. It's on your clothes. Love it. Why not? It's a heart spread. You're watching my ship reading. There's something that's unseen. Let me move along and see. It's so, probably something to do about emotions. Well, how about that? So normally what this is, is the energy of your person, where they are in terms of love and relationship. It's like the moon is where you're at. I try to look at it a little bit isolated from the relationship at first to get kind of a baseline of where each of you are. But now... This is the projection of your own anim animus. I think what this means is, um, you know, in terms of love and relationship, if, tell me if this is not true. Is this your reading? It's going to have to resonate like this. Uh, we, I don't know exactly what's going on here yet, what it is you're not seeing, but something. We're, we're working on that. But one hint is that you keep drawing in these people that are kind of broken, um, you know, uh, set up. Uh, Pisces, I don't want to say that Pisces are always broken, um, but uh, I swear to God, I, I get, I'm getting addiction, addiction, which is not normally associated with the Five of Cups, but this is the energy, like what you're drawing in, okay, and so it becomes very important, it's like the moon here, um, it's almost like the rest of the reading, we're, well this is exactly, the rest of the reading, we're building it around these two cards. So bring in people, perhaps their water signs, sun, moon, rising, or Venus, uh, dominant energies um, there. Um, now, that already implies to me what I'm getting. It sounds a little, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Phyllis, um, but uh, there's some uh, sense of vulnerability, um, sense of pain and hurt. I think it probably goes all the way back to childhood. 
you could have had a single parent and you really saw them hurting when the other parent left them. You may have seen both of them hurting when they broke up because you were being uh, going to one and then the other, right? Um, I also get the sense it's not exactly, well this reads kind of wide open. You, you may have been someone that had a parent you kind of had to take care of. I kind of get that off of that. I'm trying to think of where, what this moon is. So the thing about it is, it's like what you're drawing in is your childhood energy. And you don't see it because you don't draw in people that are like your mother in any obvious way. But you draw in, in uh, these are, you draw in the feeling tone that you had as a child. That's what I'm getting here. The feeling tone you had as a child. And someone was depressed, because a depressed parent. I mean, honestly, it could go with anything. Well, I, I, I don't think they committed suicide, because I think you might understand where it's coming from. And this is kind of subtle. You know, I'm an astrologer, done a lot of readings. And very often, you know, I start out because I'm looking at you. I say, what, what went on in childhood? Oh, nothing. You know, I had a great childhood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll talk a little bit more. And uh, how about your brothers and sisters? Oh, well, what, one was born when I, I was so and so. And you get into it, and you find out, you know, childhood wasn't that great. Nobody made love. Nobody uh, forced themselves on them sexually. Nobody beat them up. Nobody locked them in a closet. Uh, but there's deep emotional uh, patterns and issues that came um, from their childhood, guys. Um, and so as a Scorpio, I think this come naturally to you. But I think that's what's going on, okay? Now let's get an idea. This is normally the card of how, what do you really feel about your person that's on your mind? That's what this is showing me. But here is a little different. It's, you know, how are you really interacting with this um, projection here of your own sense of love and relationship, which really becomes your... Uh, anima animus projection right into that seventh house and this is one of the best cards in the deck I think I love this card key here. This is minor arcana. This is uh, doing the work yourself rolling up your sleeves doing what needs to be done So it tells me that you are someone who has done the work doesn't surprise me Okay, you are someone that is actively manifesting you know, Spiritually whatever that means for you doing the work doing the shadow work um, opening yourselves um, Looking into yourselves, all these things. Wow. Okay, these are the two worker cards in the deck. Now, in the Ethereal Visions Illuminated Tarot, the Three of Pentacles, it really emphasizes cooperation over the good worker card. And But nevertheless, it's it, uh, this is like your higher self responding. And uh, I kind of look at this. This is like your higher self you're dealing with, really, this projection. Um <clears throat> Um, with the three of pentacles uh, a real cooperation so it tells me too that it, whatever you're doing if this is something or it, it's uh, eight of pentacles um, something you've been kind of building working on in life um, it's really working you know um, and that's energy coming back at you because uh, this becomes like kind of advice here it's not really your other per human person uh, we're not really looking at how they're caring and relating to you, but we're looking here about what, how is your own higher self, how is this working. Um, and we also have to think of cooperation there, too. Now, let's look at the advice. This is normally going to be your advice uh, from spirit and how to interact with your person that's on your mind. Um, it's a little different here because now it's how to interact with your own sense of love and relationship. Again, that own anima animus projection, whatever you choose here. This is uh, directly, I think this is speaking out loud. Um, I really believe in that now. You know, I did it before, uh, but I do now. You know, thank God mostly live alone or I, I have some of my life that's also spiritual and understands. Because I do, I pray out loud I this all the time if it comes to my mind. And I think it is really about kind of that. And in terms of manifestation, it's saying it out loud and being very clear. You know, the thing about the moon, there could be some kind of fuzzy. When you look at the Eight of Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles, it's sitting down and making a list, going over it, and sitting down and thinking, like, what is it going to be like in five years? How am I going to feel in ten years? How did I feel five years ago about all this? And um, really doing, like, work here, you know? which I think you're prone to do anyway. 
So just being really precise about it. Like before, if you had said, you know, I want a good man, I want a good woman, I want a woman with a heart of gold, whatever it was, right? Um, you got to be more specific, okay? I want a woman with a heart of gold who's an artist and who's uh, a little eccentric and who uh, wears is a little bit uh, extra femme and uh, a little glam and um, this tall. <laughs> You got three of pentacles and the eight of pentacles. Also, guys, it's like I'm seeing it's like this. Look, we got the today's the day before right happening of, you know, uh, this full moon. And there's a whole lot going with it. And, you know, it's maybe saying like this is if, if you never did intentions before on a full moon, there's a million cycles with, with suggestions. Get your crystals out if you got them. Go look at the full moon. If you live anywhere near the water, go to a drum circle or something. What the hell? So now this page is looking into the reading. So I like getting this here. This is the page of cups, guys. Normally this would be the advice from spirit for your person in regards to how to best relate to you. But here, it's really kind of advice to you and it's meeting your Ace of Swords. And re reverse it so you can see the page is looking at the Ace of Swords. Um, and I, get, I believe this is like you're being told that um, if you say it, the feelings will come with it, right? If you're thinking like, yeah, if I, you know, like, I can't do the Stuart Smalley thing. I'm like, I'm good enough and I'm smart enough and uh, gum it. People like me, you know? So, I mean, maybe let go of that feeling a little bit. And what, what you gotta understand, you're gonna get back from this. Um, you may even find, I, I, I didn't really intend this reading to go this way, but I sense a water sign coming at you here. I really do. So, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Personality, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Um, um, it, it's a little bit like it's the, with the Five of Cups. So, um, you may find here this person having similar stories as other people that you've had this drawing in so here i kind of get you a little bit drawing in the same kind of energy but let's see i think maybe this one they're younger than you this person um sincere they're really into you i mean it's kind of going to be fast they're like oh my god they're really there's an infatuation with you something tells me that might not be uncommon uh, for you scorpio uh, for your people to fall hard sexy devils you um King of Pentacles. Now, there's three advice cards for you towards your higher self, your higher self towards you. And this normally is the advice for the relationship as a whole and the crux of the heart. It's a very important position for me as the heart takes shape here. And here, I mean, it's just solid. What's more solid than the King of Pentacles? Um, that's the energy of absolutely knowing your uh, self worth. Um, what a wrong, a really strong thing I'm getting from this is um, do not settle like in any way. It's like imagine you're the king there and here comes people before you. I look at it this way. and But you're just looking at them. You want to look at them like, not like, oh my God, I wonder if they'll like me or oh gosh, I wonder. Just look at them kind of like, what do I, what do I, do I really like them? When you ask them questions, you know, Scorpio is usually good at this, um, you know, really pay attention are you getting a good vibe back from them do you like them because it's not dismissive the king of pentacles and the king of pentacles is not going to waste a lot of time you know that's another thing and it's going to be kind of really solid and that's sort of like very much the advice of you know you uh, finding your inner <laughs> uh, solidness and channeling that in terms of this manifestation so you know, uh, if you don't feel solid, you feel solid. So then you've got the three of pentacles and the eight of pentacles. I think you might be. So it's really pointing you into that direction, you know, because um, being really solid is going to be part of this and just being very open and vocal and honest and direct about what and specific about what it is you want. Yeah. Judgment. And that's coming over this king of pentacles. Well, here's the thing. You can be as solid as you want, but even the king is not above judgment. And that's in the crux of the heart spread here, guys. 
it's a very interesting outcome because here we're looking at the outcome of, of I've got to figure out how to put this and your outcome of your higher self and your union with your higher self and your projection of your own inner sense of love and relationship and we'll have to go back to this moon and there's judgment is related to the moon card that I tell you there's something's probably missing there going on and it's something around this emotional uh, stuff I talked to you about maybe some of the childhood stuff you're still watching guess that resonated you know there's tons of stuff on how exactly to do this um, but I, I was saying like if you, uh, never before you took the full moon seriously you have a little time here maybe take this one seriously what I do is uh, Google well, this one's Google uh, probably you know when is the uh, eclipse in uh, the full moon eclipse in, in my zip code or whatever but I just look at the nautical full moon time I focus on uh, for Cancun Mexico here uh, but this might be a time to work on um, um, some kind of rituals judgment is being called up to our higher purpose in my opinion and that that definitely can be the energy of this full moon in fact if it's not then honestly you're operating on kind of a, a low level probably because uh, you've got to be feeling this energy just being called up, you know. It's like you can't, like, ignore it anymore. You can't run away from it in, anymore. You can't self-medicate anymore. You can't, you know, deny it anymore. And it's like uh, it's time for us to be who we need to be, which could be this too. Being open, being honest, being yourself. This is advice from spirit and how to best align yourself. And all this work you've been doing, it's like you've got to be close here. And judgment coming over the King of Pentacles as advice from spirit is kind of like, you know, you've got this, you've got plenty of strength. You know, it comes to mind the phrase, to whom much is given, much is owed. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. And um, invite me to the marriage down the road. Give me a like, thumbs up, tell a friend, tell a friend. Have you think of anywhere to share this, any platforms, please do. And I would mind if you subscribe if you haven't and hit that bell. Thank you.